responded so far, more than half have limited or suspended at least one service delivery platform, such as outpatient or inpatient services or community-based care. Almost three quarters of countries reported that dental and rehabilitation services have been partially or completely disrupted. Around two thirds of countries reported disruptions to routine immunization, diagnosis, and treatment for non communicable diseases and family planning and contraception. More than half of countries reported disruptions for mental health disorders, antenatal care, cancer diagnosis and treatment, and services for sick children. Countries are using a variety of strategies to deal with these disruptions including triage, telemedicine, and redirecting patients to alternative health facilities. Still, the consequences of these disruptions will be felt for many years to come. The world is learning the hard way that health is not a luxury item. It's the cornerstone of security, stability, and prosperity. That's why it's essential that countries not only respond urgently to the pandemic, but also that they invest in strong health systems domestically and in global health security. Last year, world leaders came together at the United Nations General Assembly in New York to adopt a landmark political declaration on universal health coverage. No more than ever, all countries must make universal health coverage a priority. It's not a question of whether countries can afford to do this. It's a question of whether they can afford not to. I thank you. Many thanks, uh, Dr. Tetris, for these opening remarks. Uh, we will now open the floor to questions, and we will try to I uh, have one question for a journalist. Uh, so we will start with Sputnik, and we have a Valentina online. Hi, uh, thank you very much for taking my question. Do you hear me? Uh, we hear you very well. 